this the handout? I'm sorry? Is this the handout? Uh, there's another one. Somebody held two handouts. Need a set of notes up here. I just so happen to have them for you. <laughs> Are you videotaping yourself right here? Yes, sir. Awesome. <laughs> Are we going to see this on YouTube tomorrow? You might. All right. Hello, my name is Nathan Kring. As you can tell by my accent, I'm not from around here. <clears throat> the purpose of today's class is to introduce the student to the three control modes, proportional, integral, and derivative, and to build a, a kind of a curiosity to further your own knowledge. And the reason for that is I don't have eight hours to sit here and adequately describe how a controller works. So I'm going to give you the building blocks the basic foundation, and then I've got a list of links at the bottom of the notes page that will help you uh, look up other stuff. But to start out with the notes, let me, where's the, the notes page? That's, the That's okay, take it. I got extra. Here we go. See, on the notes page, I did you all a favor and went ahead and wrote out all your notes for you. And these questions on the back, those are just um, discussion questions. I'm going to answer all those questions for you. And the purpose of this sheet is to keep it with you, like in your locker or something, and if you ever have a problem with a controller, that you can go back and look at this and kind of refresh yourself, uh, since you don't work on controllers very often and uh, be up to speed pretty quick. So, to start off, what is the simplest control mode? And don't think about proportional integral and derivative at this point. Think about what is the simplest controller that you can think of. In fact, there's one in this room. Uh -huh. There you go. On-off control is the easiest method of control. It's the simplest method, and everybody knows how your thermostat works. Once your temperature in your room starts going down, the thermostat turns on the heater and then the temperature goes back up. So you end up with kind of a sawtooth waveform on your uh, temperature control. Can anyone tell me or kind of uh, guess why we don't use on-off control in the plant? If you can imagine maybe the all the distillation columns and all the knockouts kind of swaying back and forth in the <laughs> as the on-off control slams all the valves open and shut. So <clears throat> that's uh, why we need PID controllers and number three there is uh, we want to increase the, uh, the stability of the process is why we use the controllers with the three elements. And uh, does everybody, is everybody familiar with the term open loop and closed loop control to start off with? Closed loop is like feedback loop? Yeah, okay. feedback <coughs> loop. Uh, for example, if you had a, a pipe with a valve on the end of it, <coughs> and downstream somewhere, I guess I better get a better marker. You had a pressure tap and a, a pressure transmitter. We want to control the pressure in this pipe, so pressure in the pipe is our feedback signal. Our feedback signal is then processed by this transmitter and fed to a controller, <coughs> which then in turn feeds the valve. It's a closed loop process. Can anyone describe a good example of an open loop? If you think about the, the movie Talladega Nights whenever he blindfolds Ricky Bobby and tells him to drive the car, that would be an example of open loop control. You can't see what's going on in the process, so you're driving all over the place. Now, uh, the second sheet that I gave you is a little Excel spreadsheet that shows the relationship between proportional band and gain to start our discussion on proportional control. Uh, proportional band, the definition of proportional band is the amount of input change or the percent of change in the input that will cause a hundred percent change 
in the output. So if I say 10% proportional band, then I would need a change of 10% on the input to make a 100% change in the output. And that correlates to gain in a kind of an inverse relationship where you can see is uh, <coughs> the gain of the uh, proportional band of 10 equals a gain of 10. That's the only place where it is equal. All the other ones, it's an inverse relationship. Uh, and the way I created this spreadsheet, the reason that I lined up 1% and 100% right beside it is so that you could see that in order to change those two, all you need to do is move the decimal point. So if you're trying to figure out gain as, a, as it relates to proportional band, it's all there for you. And I drew this little chart on the side to show you that. And this is question number four. As proportional band decreases linearly, your gain increases exponentially. <clears throat> now, does anyone know the, the uh, drawback to a proportional only control scheme? Offset? That's correct, offset. <clears throat> if we had this set up and we tuned out the integral and derivative, we would end up with a pressure offset. And uh, I drew out a little example for this, so if you'll give me a second. I had to make notes so that I wouldn't get flustered up here and forget. But let's say that we had a 0 to 100 pound process. Make the numbers simple. 0 to 100, 100 pounds, 0 to 100 percent. So now your pressure transmitter has a output of 4 to 20. Man, none of these markers. Well, we're we're going to only talk to you dry quick, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to end up going through a lot of them while I'm up here. <clears throat> All right, 4 to 20, and we're usually rocking along at 50 pounds. 50 pounds is our set point. That's what we want. 50 pounds is dialed into this into this controller is 50 percent. I don't want to put percent. That's wrong. Because you might get confused with proportional band. We're not talking about that yet. 50 pounds set point is tuned into the proportional controller. So if this transmitter is rocking along at 50 percent, then it's sitting at 12 milliamps, right? And let's say that we had an increasing signal that went up about 12 and a half percent. That would bring us up to fourteen milliamps output on our transmitter. Now this is just a hypothetical. You don't need to draw this. I'm just trying to give you an example of the relationship between proportional band and gain. So don't don't get too mixed up in the numbers. I am because I want everything to be correct. <coughs> that increasing signal from 12 to 14 milliamps is, you know, it, it correlates to a pressure increase of 50 to 62 and a half pounds. That signal is then fed into our controller and if you want a mathematical representation of our controller, if you think about it as a summing node where you have your 14 milliamps coming in and you have a set point of 12 milliamps, what is the error? Two milliamps, that's correct. So the output of this controller would be a relation, would be in relation to how much proportional band we have driving the error. So since we have an error of two, to make the numbers easy, I put in a, or I've envisioned a proportional band of 
fifty percent proportional band if you look on your chart or if you just think about it for a second you'll find out that that is a gain of two so our output which is normally at twelve milliamps would start to increase with that increase in input to sixteen milliamps do you see where that gain comes in now your gain of two was multiplied by the gain factor, which is two, to a four milliamp change. So your your output of your controller went from 12 milliamps to 16 milliamps, and drives the valve one way or the other to try to raise or try to lower the pressure in the pipe. Now, can anyone think of an example in the plant? where we could stand and offset uh, any kind of a batch process, say for example pumpers. Pumpers run in batches, right? So they could possibly work with an offset such that the proportional band would uh, present to them. But I'm sure that Dave Charette would get tired of going out there and adjusting the controller to get the signal, the uh, the pressure back to set point. You see a proportional controller, it'll adjust this valve until the process, you know, it comes back under control, but it will have an offset between where it is and where the set point is. And let's say that, just for argument's sake, that the pressure came back to 55 pounds. Well, that's a five pound offset. Dave Shrev would have to go out there and reset the controller to make the pressure of the system come back down to 50. So what the engineers with the really skinny ties came up with to make an automatic reset <clears throat> and they called it integral. So stepping into integral, what is another name for integral control mode is reset or automatic reset. And you'll see that written in the controllers on the little knob. You'll see reset or integral or I. <clears throat> and that is another, the next control function the, uh, next to the proportional band. What did I see here? What is the integral mode scaled in? Can anyone just off the top of their head tell me what integral is scaled in? Repeats per minute. Time. Very good. Repeats per minute or minutes per repeat, depending upon uh, the application. So, what your integral does, your integral controller action, is it acts to move the process pressure back to set point. Instead of just moving this valve proportional to the error signal and hoping that nature sorts it way or sorts its way out. We're going to continue to drive this valve until this number equals fifty. <coughs> and then we're going to stop moving the valve. And the way that works is <coughs> your integral control action works off your proportional action. So that is the answer to why can't a controller be integral only. It needs a proportional action to act upon. So if we... Uh, I've already lost a note. I even recapped it that time. Let's say that our uh, our process is trucking along at 12 milliamps. Everything's fine. We're at 50 percent. You know, all is right in the world. And then we receive a change in process that causes our proportional action to raise us to 16 milliamps. If we have an integral function on our controller, that proportional action will be repeated by the time constant however many resets per minute or minutes per reset you put in it. Let's say it's one reset per minute, just for argument's sake. So the output of this controller will keep going up to 20 over the next minute. Do you see 
what that, how that would work. You're, you're not just driving the output up a percentage, you know, according to the error signal. You're continuing to drive it up so as to jump out in front of the error and pull it back under control. Now what is the drawback to a proportional integral control? Can anybody dig back into the deep recesses of historical antique instrumentation, aka pneumatics? Reset wind up. There you go, reset wind up. <laughs> reset wind up was a, a problem that was common in old pneumatic controllers. And what that meant was, in our example here, we went to 20 milliamps, right? If we were on a pneumatic controller that was 3 to 15 and we went to 15 PSI and that integral action kept trying to push the output higher, the output would go higher to a certain point and then it would stop. And if the process came back under control, it would have a big negative swing because the output would still be driven hard high because of reset windup. It was kind of like a mechanical binding of the controller and it caused the output to stay high. So that is the drawback to proportional integral only control is reset windup. If I could for a second, Nathan. Yes, sir. An analogy for reset windup is when we do pneumatic positioners is what do we do? We, we calibrate them saturation to saturation, right? We put in 15 pounds, the valve only needs 15 pounds on a bench set to go close. But because the feedback arm is not happy, it continues to drive it to whatever your supply pressure is. That's an example of, or an analogy to associate with reset windup. Yeah, and if, if your process doesn't come back under control before reset windup occurs, either the output will stay saturated or it will take a very long time for the output to come back down. And that if I remember correctly, it's been a long time since I looked at it, but it had to do with a volume chamber on the controller itself being full of air and having to have time to bleed off. <coughs> Let's see. So we uh, go into our third mode of control, which is derivative or rate control. I went blank there for a minute. Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't get to do public speaking every day, so it's easy for me to go into reset wind up. Um, derivative control mode. <coughs> this one is a little complicated. What it does is it takes its cues off of the change in the process, namely the slope of the process. So if I had, now this is the, the process, if I had a process that was trucking along and then all of a sudden it did like that, then I would expect my proportional action to take its cue off the slope of that line and the derivative action would initially be positive. And it would drive the output more positive. When the process reached this peak, the derivative action would go away because the process wasn't changing anymore at that instant in time. And as the process came back down, the slope of the line would be negative and it would start to drive the output of the controller negative. Now, I realize that I'm going through this really fast. It's because I'm really time constrained. So on your notes sheet on the front of it, I put kind of like a textbook definition of proportional integral and derivative with places to put notes as you see fit. Memory cues that will help you should you ever encounter a problem with a controller and need to freshen up. <clears throat> but the derivative control mode, it acts on line slope. Now, What is another name for derivative control mode? I said it before. Rate. Rate control or just rate. What is the drawback to proportional derivative control? Can anyone tell me of a 
a process where you wouldn't want just proportional and derivative. Let's say that we had a process that was subject to a spike, that it had a lot of noise on it. You would not want derivative control on that process because your output would continually be slamming uh, rail to rail, so to speak. Uh, which brings us to another, what nature of process would derivative control be unadvised? I would say maybe a, a temperature control or a flow control where you might encounter cavitation. You know, with the flow control, you might have a pump that may be cavitating, may cause pressure spikes, and that derivative control would be going crazy at that point. Um, let me make sure that I've gone through all my notes properly. Does anyone have any questions at this point? These, like I said, this is just the, the brief <laughs> overview of the three modes of control. If I were to try to describe how a controller works, I would need many more hours of the day. <laughs> so this is just kind of a basic building blocks kind of thing. But can anyone think of any questions concerning what's been covered. Do you have any shortcuts for computing PID? There are programming softwares out on the internet that you can download that will uh, tell you, you know, you have to enter process parameters and all that such and it will tell you a starting point. But in my experience, in dealing with pneumatic controllers, I've had to control or I've had to tune in level controllers primarily on feed water heaters and feed water drain tanks. And that is really a trial and error. But the main thing to remember when you change a control setting is to, unless you're really confident, change it a little and then step back and watch and see what happens. Because if you if you get in the habit of changing it, and then all of a sudden the pressure goes pssst, and the valve goes shh, and then you change it again, well, you have no idea what you just did. So you've got to change it a touch, step back and watch the process and see if it comes back to set point or whatever you're trying to accomplish. Um, so you have to look, kind of look at it as a trend. You got yeah. you got to trend it out. Yes, uh, time is. This is a process that takes time. For example, Brian and I did a controller in the 12 unit, Vessel 12, which is the interface level. You've got a, a vessel that separates water from oil. You've got a mixture of water and oil coming into it. The oil is supposed to go to a different unit. The water is supposed to drop out of the bottom. And your Fisher level troll is sitting there and it's looking at that interface level, which if you consider that water has a specific gravity of 1.0 and the oil that we were dealing with had a specific gravity of about 0.82, there was not much specific gravity change in that interface. So if it was full of water, the displacer was all the way at the top. If it was full of oil, the displacer was about that far off the top. <laughs> we had very little displacer movement to deal with. So what I immediately did when we went out there to calibrate it was I moved the span as low as I could to get that controller to try to recognize that little bit of movement. And then I started tweaking the gain up. And as we know from this sheet, Proportional band is the inverse of gain, so I started tweaking the proportional band down until I was satisfied that the process would respond to that little bitty change in displacer level. <coughs> and that, with pending further questions, would conclude my talk. Does anyone have anything further? Did anyone miss any? Any questions as I was going through it?
does everyone have all their answers? No, I don't. I don't. If you want to just go over that real quick. All right. Know. Simplest mode of control, on off. I don't know. Thermostat is your example. A good example of open loop control would be uh, driving with your blinders on, driving blind. You have no feedback to tell where you are. Shake and bake. <coughs> Shake and bake, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Why do we need PID controllers? So that things will run more smoothly. We don't want <coughs> valves uh, being on-off control all the time. <coughs> As proportional band decreases linearly, how does gain respond? It increases exponentially. So that's not, it doesn't increase linear? No. No, in fact, if you just take 0 through 10, the very top left of your chart, 0 through 10, you go from infinite to 100 then to 50, then to 33, then to 25, then 20, so on and so forth. That corresponds to that curve that is drawn on the side. Proportional band was just an easier way to describe the effects of gain on a control loop, if that makes any sense. Uh, with proportional band, you can say, I set my proportional band at this. So that means that if my input changes, by that percentage, I can expect a full span of change on the output. And that, in a way, correlates to gain. The drawback to proportional only control, offset. You'll end up with an offset from set point. Like in our example with the, the pressure in the pipe being 55 instead of 50, the control operator would have to go out there and <coughs> reset that controller and make the pressure go back down to set point, which brought us into integral control mode or reset. Integral control mode or reset is scaled in minutes per repeat or repeats per minute. <coughs> The drawback to, the, to PI control is reset wind up, which in your electronic controllers today, you don't have to worry about reset wind up anymore. That was just a little tidbit from the past in case you happen to run across an old PI pneumatic controller that may have one out here still. <coughs> Why can't a controller be integral only? because it needs a proportional signal to act on. It needs something to repeat. What is another name for derivative control mode? Anybody? Rate. Very good. The drawback to proportional and derivative control is it <coughs> triggers sharply on noise. If you have any noise in your process, if you're dealing with an electronic signal, you can encounter noise. And that could cause everything downstream to start rocking and rolling with that noise because derivative keys off the slope of the error signal. It's also a way of pulling back on the proportional action, if you will, of a rate change along with a proportional change in output the rate change would be like reining it back, reining it in. Uh, instead of just that proportional control signal, you know, making a change and saying, okay, let nature sort it out, the rate signal would be a way of constraining that proportional change it's had and make it not be so dramatic. What nature of process would a derivative control be unadvised? I think flow would be a major one because of stuff like pump cavitations or valve failures and, and all that. What you say on that one, Nathan, that uh, something you don't want a uh, derivative to be on is a fast acting process? Yeah. Or Which would be like an example of your spikes, right? Your spikes yeah. is the ultimate fast acting process, so you don't want to respond to that. So if you're going to have a, a, a fast responding process, you have to be very careful with derivative because you can drive it the other way. Mm -hmm. Like a turbulent level? 
Um, it turn, yeah, well, you need yeah. to turn, you gotta be careful on that one. Um, yeah, that, and yeah, that's the reason for stealing, stealing yep. wells, but uh, hopefully your stealing well would be able to get all that noise out of the level, but if it didn't, you would either want to tune derivative out, and as you can tell from the notes side of the, the textbook definition side, down here about three quarters of the way down where it says TD equals zero means no derivative action, you can tune derivative out of the system. Or if noise wasn't a problem all the time or if it wasn't that dramatic, you could tune just a little bit of derivative control in there and uh, get that system under control. Another drawback, and I forgot to mention this before, another drawback to proportional plus derivative control is that the proportional offset, remember that offset, the five pound offset that I showed in my example, that offset will still, incur, and will still occur with derivative tuned into the system. You need reset control to get the system to come back to set point. So that's another drawback to proportional plus derivative control is the offset. And then you have links to look at. All of the notes on the textbook definition side of the page came from the first link, which is also noted at the bottom of the page. I needed to throw something together real quick. I know that some people like textbook definitions better than you know, their notes, so I put both of them on here. And this should be at least a starting point to, to getting you to understand how a controller works. So, okay. sir? This little trend here, what is the left represents um, the proportional band, or <coughs> what is the left scale from 0 to 120? The vertical scale, that's gain. Okay. You see, this graph, I only did uh, 1 through 10. I didn't put zero proportional band on there for obvious reasons. But this chart down at the bottom, the horizontal axis is zero through 10 proportional band. The vertical axis is gain. I apologize about that graph. I, I was running out of time. It was getting to be the witching hour and I needed to go to bed so that I could be fresh to teach this class this morning. <laughs> And uh, I couldn't figure out how to name the axes on this chart, so <laughs> I was, and uh, it, uh, the chart, now that I've explained it, should be pretty uh, easy to understand. One through ten at the bottom, and then that correlates to gain in uh, an exponential curve. And that curve, the reason I only did it one through ten is because it repeats. You see uh, how I put 0 through 10 and then 10, 20, 30 through 100 and then 100 through 1,000. You know, I did those decades like that because this chart will directly repeat. The data is the same. The only thing that changed was the decimal place. And that's why I put the two columns beside each other so that you could look straight across from one proportional band equals 100 gain you could look directly across and say, oh, well, 100% proportional band equals one gain. The 100% proportional band, I forgot to touch on that, that is what you would call in the audio amplifier world unity gain. Uh, a proportional band of 100% says that if my input changes 100%, I can expect my output to change 100%. It's a gain of one. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. One multiplication factor. So this chart, uh, it describes a couple of different things. And I also put the equations to go from gain to proportional band and back at the bottom. So hopefully that was enlightening and not so confusing. But as you know, I'll be around the shop if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Nathan. Appreciate Thank you. you. <laughs>